Surrounded by farmland in Iowa's centermost county, you'll find the small town of Roland. Founded by Norwegian settlers, the town was incorporated in 1892. About 1,300 people live in this central Iowa community, including Jerry Hansacker, the entrepreneur behind Innovative Lighting. A recognized leader in developing and manufacturing LED lighting technology with proprietary optics, Innovative Lighting offers a diverse line of energy-efficient products and accessories for many different industries. And innovation was something Jerry learned as a boy growing up on the family farm near Roland. Curiosity has been important, uh, self-reliance that you gain uh, from being out on a farm and not having something next door that you can you needed to get some work done that uh, would take you several hours if you try to schedule somebody else to fix it or you fix it yourself. At a young age, I'd have to tear apart things to make sure I understood how, they, how it worked. And uh, when my first car, I rebuilt the engine in it. So it's, uh, it's something that we just thought is natural. Jerry left the farm and became a successful lawyer in Algona. But after 20 years of practicing law, he had the idea of creating a unique boat light to sell for extra income. When I came up with an idea that I wanted to patent, I thought, well, I'll patent this and, you know, and then uh, uh, look uh, to other companies to build it and send me a royalty check. And it didn't work out that way, so I ended up having to then go the next step and Create, uh, create drawings and uh, cre ultimately create the, uh, the device. Life was extremely busy for Jerry as he was a full-time lawyer while trying to find the time to launch his new business. Went to the trade shows myself, met the leaders of, of a lot of different companies around the country, great people, and saw that there was a big world outside of, uh, out of the four walls of my law office. and. I enjoyed that, but uh, at the same time, I had to support my family. Jerry had a difficult decision to make. He chose to quit practicing law and invest all of his time and energy into the business. He quickly realized that he needed to diversify his business in order to grow. It was fun creating things, and I soon learned that we're spending the money to go to a trade show and we have one product, and the boat companies are like car companies. They look at all these new products and decide whether they're going to put that product on once a year. So you had one shot, and we had only one product, so it was either 100% good or a very bad result. And so we started making a, a series of smaller LED lighting products at that point in time. So maybe we didn't get one product placed on the boat, but we offered other ones. And then we added engineering uh, to the company, uh, had uh, a couple of optical engineers that helped create uh, the optics that really were new in the industry for LEDs. Um, people were just getting used to LEDs projecting light instead of being the indicator light on their phones or their computers. So once it projected light, it just projected it in a set pattern. Well, that pattern usually didn't match up with what you needed for a navigation light or, or even a turn signal or side marker light. So we had to modify that uh, uh, pattern and create the pattern that's, uh, that would allow you to pass uh, DOT regulations. We were early in that, in that range, and we were early in commercial lighting, providing specific patterns and uh, using minimal amount of LEDs to still illuminate areas, not wasting any of the, of the light rays that were coming out of the LEDs. Just kept uh, growing and adding different departments to this company. The business was growing and in dire need of a larger facility. Jerry wanted to be closer to his family in central Iowa, so Innovative Lighting made the move from Algona to his hometown of Roland. Uh, some of my original employees uh, helped with the transition, so there were some that came down and helped train. We tried to keep two facilities open for a while, and it, it got to be uh, hard to do uh, and 90 miles apart, but uh, moving forward and as I look back, that was uh, probably good for us to have everything in one spot as we're trying to uh, develop new products and grow the company. 
Jerry was a pioneer in the LED lighting industry in the mid-90s, and he traveled the country to teach potential clients about the benefits of this technology. Meanwhile, more and more products were being designed in Roland and taken to market. Innovative Lighting grew to 180 employees to keep up with the demand. We were on Inc. Magazine's list of the 500 fastest growing companies in the country uh, four times uh, during that period of time. Uh, and part of it was we were taking things that we'd buy, uh, like the plastic parts that we built our lights with, and bringing that in-house. And so we started doing our own injection molding. Part of that was just because we just will make the profit on our own product, but the other part is we're making precise optical lenses that's built into those uh, plastic parts. If you're not familiar with that and fully pack out your tool and make sure that the lens uh, areas uh, stay highly polished in your tooling, you can get a whole shipment of parts that won't comply with somebody's regulation. So we started making those ourselves and then we had customers ask to have us mold product for them and, and fill up our machines. So we did that and then pretty soon that division of the company was driving the purchase of more machines, not for lighting, but for their needs instead of our needs. Everything was going well for innovative lighting until the United States entered the financial crisis in 2008. It was the worst economic disaster since the Great Depression of 1929, and Jerry was forced to make some extremely difficult decisions as he had to downsize and eliminate about 80 employees. It was a difficult time. We, we sold a lot of our products to uh, what I call the discretionary cash industry. So. Uh, you know, something that people didn't have to have, but they wanted to have. The uh, boats, the uh, golf cart trailers, the horse trailers, and uh, you know, different uh, areas that people stopped spending in those. So those industries were impacted very severely. Uh, I think there was over 50% unemployment in the marine industry. And uh, so we had to downsize. Uh, we're doing it so that people could work maybe a few hours a week and then draw an employment the rest of the time. But at the same time, we started developing other products in the non-discretionary cash industry since one of those were the uh, cooler lights that we put into freezers and coolers and grocery stores and convenience stores. And, and it saved them energy, uh, but it also, uh, we felt everybody, maybe they didn't have to buy a boat, but they could, they had to eat still. And it helped us through that uh, downturn uh, area, but um, it was still a difficult time. We, I'm not, uh, we're still not up, back up the same amount of employees that we had prior to that. Jerry persevered through the economic crisis and added two more facilities in the Iowa communities of Ankeny and Albia, where his team created many more new products. I think we have over a thousand uh, products that we offer in our catalog and on the website. Even in the past, we put a lot of our profit we made on, on sales into new product development, uh, giving our sales staff something new to take out to the customers and to entice new customers to come on board. About four years ago, we started down a line of uh, adding controls to commercial lighting, and we've developed a, a system called Genesis Lighting. It powers and controls lighting over ethernet cables. And what's neat about that, instead of putting a typical on-off switch uh, circuits in the ceiling, we're installing a network in the ceiling, and you happen to get lighting as a bonus to that. Everything's hooked together, so if you want to change how you're lighting anything, you can just do it on the computer. It's got a wall switch, but uh, also you can control them from your phone, and uh, we think that eventually you'll get over 90% savings over what you were doing 10 years ago. In 2018, Innovative Lighting celebrates its 25th anniversary. Jerry Hansacker has successfully brought many jobs to the town of Roland, and his team has created hundreds of products to help conserve energy through various lighting applications. I learned it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. You have to be persistent. Your integrity means a lot because people are having to judge you as well as what they think of a product. I learned that you need to surround yourself with bright people, probably brighter than I am, uh, because I can be a visionary, uh, but I like 
to hear their vision. I like to implement their vision, uh, have them be a part of it, uh, own it, um, and uh, and then a lot of times their skills get me farther than my skills. Jerry uses the lessons that he learned on the farm and in the courtroom practicing law in his business nearly every single day. Not many people would leave a career as a successful lawyer to risk it all as an entrepreneur. But Jerry Hansacker isn't like most people, and he isn't done chasing his dreams. You shouldn't be expecting it to happen overnight. Uh, it's going to probably take more time and more money than you expect. and. Uh, um, uh, but I think the rewards are, are there uh, for a, a, an entrepreneur that's uh, willing to put in the time and effort uh, and, and uh, uh, make their dreams come true. My name is Darren Ottman and I started out in Mason City. Hello. Uh, I worked all, all the way th uh, through high school with Fairway and I went to one year of college and decided to go full time with Fairway and make it a career. And it's been a very good choice. So I've been with them for 36 years. Fairway tells us to treat everybody like they're your neighbor. So love your neighbor as yourself basically is the philosophy. And that's what they push is be a good community member. Here, I'll help you out there, sir. You, help me out. you bet. I don't like know where summer went, went, but... <laughs> where did it go? Yeah, I know. July 4th hit and it's gone. I know, it was really fast. Hey, have a good well, one. You too, thank you very much. Yep. Fairway's like, it's like a, a second family. We always, uh, since we're not open 24 hours a day and we're not open on Sundays, and uh, we were always guaranteed another day off, so it just gave me a lot of time to spend with my family, and family is very important to me, and, and uh, I feel like Fairway's concerned about me as a person, not just, you know, you're another person helping us. And I try to be that as a manager, not just a boss-employee relationship, but I like to know, you know, get involved in people's life, help them out, help them grow as a human being. Fairway is a well-known grocery company in and around Iowa with 117 locations across five states. In Iowa, Fairway is a top 10 employer servicing customers in rural towns, as well as Iowa's larger markets. In many ways, Fairway is a unique grocery company. They are heavily community and employee oriented. They take pride in their meat and produce departments, and they are closed on Sundays to show appreciation for their workers. These values were established by Fairway's founders, Paul Beckwith and Fred Vitt, 80 years ago. In the 1930s, Paul and Fred worked for a grocery store chain based in Omaha. Paul worked as a meat buyer, and Fred managed a store in Shenandoah, Iowa. My grandfather's background was in the meat business. He, was, uh, he grew up on a farm and got a start working at a locker, and then started working for a chain of grocery stores. And he was a quiet guy, he was a, a gentle, kind person, um, very thoughtful, kind of a long-term thinker. Paul was more behind the scenes as the business developed. And Fred was an um, uh, excellent merchant, uh, more outgoing than my grandfather was. Really added flair to the retail, developed the customer relationship. Uh, Fred was good at that. and knew that business, and uh, taught the people around him to do that. Paul liked working for the grocery company, but a change in a company policy enticed him to start his own business. He asked Fred to join him on his entrepreneurial journey. There were just uh, two great people that uh, were very, very intelligent. I uh, loved the grocery business, loved the meat business, especially on Paul's side, and we're working for a company at the time that uh, I think overall they enjoyed it, but when they came to a point um, where that company decided to take away their bonuses for their managers, I think that's when they realized that this company 
you know, it really isn't family friendly from that standpoint. I can just surmise that their overall motivation, just let them know that if we can do this for someone else, obviously we can do it for ourselves. Paul and Fred decided to start their grocery chain in a new market, away from their employer. My family has always gone up north in northern Minnesota fishing in, for a vacation, and I still do that. Uh, but as they drove through Iowa and up into Minnesota, they always noticed that the soil was rich and black and the farmers were prosperous in Iowa. And so they thought that would translate into a better grocery business. They'd have hardworking farmer uh, type agriculture people working in the stores and they thought Iowa would be a good place to do that. And that's, that's why the first store was in Boone. The first store would have been in Ames, uh, and as a matter of fact, they incorporated in Story County. But uh, something opened up in Boone, a little garage downtown. Then the second store was in Ames. Third store was in Webster City, and so on. Even though they moved to a new market, there was still a lot of competition. That is where their experience in the grocery market came in handy. There were, uh, I believe, close to 50 neighborhood grocery stores at that time, and there was probably uh, seven or eight grocery stores in the downtown area when Fairway came here. But Paul and Fred both believed if uh, they offered everyday low prices on quality items, that they could uh, build their volume and, and hopefully make a profit in the end, and they worked very hard to accomplish that. Probably the most important factor is Fred and, and Paul both were very conscious of the cost of those goods and the transportation cost of getting those goods to the stores and watching the amount of money that was being spent to hold down those expenses. I know in the beginning they took out the back seat of a car and used it as basically a, a truck to move the groceries around. Uh, anything they could do to hold down the expenses uh, to the stores uh, would hopefully help them become more successful and, and be profitable in the end. And I think that philosophy of, of being frugal uh, carried on through to the employees and they understood uh, that we have to watch everything because it all counts in the end. Those guys lived through the depression and if you think about where they got their start in the grocery business during the Depression. So they, they watched, as young men, they watched a lot of businesses fail. That creates a real conservative perspective on how you spend your money. Well, I believe it was Paul's belief and Fred's belief that uh, we're gonna do this with cash only. So some years were better than others, but they didn't want to build a new store till they had the cash to uh, pay for that new store. And that way in difficult economic times, they wouldn't have the burden of having to pay interest on money that was borrowed. And I really feel it's that philosophy that got them through those difficult times. But again, the employees of the company also understood that and how important it was uh, to really watch everything that you do and the cost of doing it. And that became just the culture of Fairway. Using profits only, Paul and Fred added stores across the state. While they had an impressive footprint, they had yet to break into larger metropolitan areas like Sioux City or Des Moines. The cities were more unpredictable. Competition-wise, you could build in a site and I uh, think you had uh, a really good competitive situation by your choice of location, and that could change really fast. So they were leery of how quickly things could change in the metro market. Um, I think they were a little spoiled uh, being in small towns, small agricultural towns where all of our help was being drawn from um, uh, families who were uh, probably from an ag background, so you had hardworking people that just uh, expected to come into the grocery business and work just as hard as they did on the farm. And uh, 
I don't think we realize that you'd find people like that in the city too, but um, they, they were confident that that could happen and be reproduced in the small towns. Now guided by Paul and Fred's descendants, Fairway saw its first opportunity to enter a large market in the early 80s. It was about 1982 when our competitor decided to close some stores in Sioux City, Iowa, along with several other communities, rural communities. And it was at that time Fairway bought some of those sites and we ended up converting that store into a Fairway store. And that's what got us into Sioux City in 1982. And then along about 1990, we finally entered the Des Moines market. So in 1990, uh, we went to uh, Des Moines, opened up uh, the store in Euclid. That was our first big city town that we were going to. Uh, I can tell you without a doubt, there were Fairway people, Fairway board members, Fairway family. They didn't want to have anything to do, do with it. It was just too scary. We'd never survive in a big city. It wasn't who we were. Um, that was an opportunity for some, someone to take a risk and hopefully seek a reward. Uh, we look in Des Moines today, we have 16, 17, 18 stores. When you think about all the uh, suburbs, I mean, it's really grown. And that's kind of been our philosophy ever since 1990 was, if we're going to go to a metro, let's do it. Let's get a lot of stores there. Uh, it helps from our branding, it helps from advertising, all those types of things. Um, I'm sure it was pretty scary back then. In 1990, I was in Decorah going to Luther College. Um, I was working in our meat department. Um, I was just in a little small store. I wasn't thinking about the big city. You know, that wasn't, that wasn't what I was doing. Um, I'm sure it was a tough decision for some here at the corporate office to make that decision, but it was the best thing we ever could have done. In the late 90s and 2000s, Fairway expanded into all of the major markets, including Waterloo, Cedar Falls, Iowa City, and the Quad Cities. While Paul Beckwith and Fred Vitt are long gone, they have left a legacy for their family and for their trusted employees. Currently, Fairway is operating by a mix of family and longtime employees, many of which got their start stocking shelves and carrying groceries. Reynolds Kramer is a fourth generation Beckwith, and he got his start in the warehouse. Today, he is the CEO. Well, I'm smart enough to know that really my job as being fourth generation is, is kind of a temp job, to be honest with you. I'm here for a certain amount of time. I got to take the company from here and I got to move it up to here. And then the next person is going to come along and they're going to take it from here and move it up to there. And that's what it's all about. I need to take about 50% of our culture and our history and keep that alive. And then the other 50%, I need to be very progressive be forward thinking and making sure that we're relevant as a company. Finding that balance, that's, that's really the key for us for our future. 